Hey everyone, so today I want to talk about the Switch, but just very quickly, in a, a video I did a couple of days ago, I did mention that I'd reviewed the Bounty Hunter because a few people had asked for it. I don't know where that video has gone. I definitely did review it, and I swear I uploaded the video, but um, I can't seem to find it, so I'll try and redo that at some point. The Switch, released in 2010, is another Jennifer Franson film that it's taken me, shockingly, a very long time to get around to seeing. And having watched it, I can now say, yes, brilliant, but it'll never be one of my favourite Jennifer Aniston films. Um, just to go over the plot briefly for those of you who may not have seen it, um, Cassie has realised that she wants a baby. And, you know, she doesn't have a boyfriend, she doesn't have a husband, but she doesn't care. She wants a child. So she goes um, looking into sperm donors and things, and that only takes a very short amount of time in the film. You know, quite often when the film looks at donors, it will be the main theme of the film. Whereas this, it technically isn't, because she finds somebody, but her, her friend of many, many years, Wally, doesn't agree with her using a donor when she doesn't have a boyfriend or something. She, he thinks she should wait. So one drunken night, um, he switches the sperm donor sperm with his own, but he doesn't realise when he wakes up the next morning with a hangover. And then seven years pass. Now those seven years pass in the space of about two minutes. You know, it's a very quick thing. We don't get to see it. And then Cassie comes back into Wally's life and now she has a child, um, Sebastian. And Wally doesn't realise what he'd done because he was drunk, he forgot. And the whole film is kind of, will he realise? Will he put two and two together? And then will Cassie realise that the father of her son is not who she thought it was? And I think that makes it unique in the sense that, as I said, it's not all about her trying to find somebody, whereas similar programmes are. I think there's... Um, Okay, the, only, the only one I can kind of think of that's similar is the backup plan, but this is kind of the backup plan in reverse, almost. Um, kind of. If you've seen it, you'll know why I said that. If you haven't, ignore it. So I do think the plot is very interesting. It unfolds quite well, the fact that we get to have seven years in the space of one film, and then some more as well, because I was, I was watching it, and casting is fantastic. I mean, it's kind of obvious casting when I say what I'm waiting to say, but Sebastian is played by Thomas Robinson. And I was looking on IMDb just to double check facts and things. And then it said, older Sebastian, Bryce Robinson. I was like, the actor changed? Are you kidding me? And um, obviously Thomas and Bryce Robinson are brothers and Bryce is slightly older. So as towards the end of the film, obviously Sebastian grows a bit because time passes and children grow. They replaced Thomas Robinson with his brother Bryce Robinson to play the same character. Didn't notice. I, I honestly amazed when I saw that because normally you can tell, you know, like kind of, oh, they've changed the kid. Nope. It's done so well and so cleverly that you don't notice and you just kind of... He does look older but at the same time he doesn't because obviously you're, you're not thinking about him. It's, it's really, really well done. I'm very impressed. Um, Jason Bateman plays Wally. Absolutely fantastic. Um, comedic timing with his with the delivery of a lot of his lines is fantastic. Very impressed and obviously Jennifer Aniston plays Cassie. Plot is fantastic, casting is great, it's not rolling on the floor, dying of laughter, funny, but as I've said this before, with Jennifer Franston films, even though they are rom-coms most of the time, they're not, they're not a comedy, they are a rom-com, they're not meant to make you die laughing, um, so you are sucked in, there's a lot of emotional scenes, especially with Sebastian and Wally, there are um, quite a few tears there, but yeah, absolutely no complaints with this at all, as I said, it'll never really be my greatest Jennifer Aniston film. There's nothing wrong with it, it just doesn't capture me as much as, say, Love Happens or um, some of the other ones. The Bounty Hunter, I love that. Things like that. It's not as high up there for me as they are, but it is very good. Please feel free to leave comments on the Switch, let me know your thoughts, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!